Hi everyone, in this talk, which is a joint work with Virginia Vasilovska Williams, I'm going to talk about computing girth and spanners in directed graphs. Girth is one of the most fundamental graph parameters, and so its computation has been studied for a long time. Um, the round trip spanners, which are sparse subgraphs of the original graph, are very useful in a lot of settings and are very related to the girth. Um, so let's define both. Um, the girth is the length of the shortest cycle in the graph. Um, for example, here the shortest directed cycle in this graph is the red one and has length 4. So uh, the girth in this directed graph is 4. Um, a C approximate round trip spanner of a directed graph G is a subgraph H of G such that for any two nodes U and V, the round trip distance of U and V in H is at most C times the round trip distance of U and V in G. The round trip distance of U and V in a graph um, is the distance from U to V plus the distance from V to U. For example, in this graph, the red uh, subgraph is a two approximate round trip spanner because any two nodes uh, in the original graph are in a cycle of length three or more, and now any two nodes are in a cycle of length six in the red subgraph. First, let's focus on the girth. Um, computing girth can be done by computing all pairwise distances, that is, solving the all pair shortest paths problem in order tilde of m and time, where m is the number of edges, n is the number of nodes, and the tilde means that we are ignoring sublinear factors. Um, under popular hardness hypothesis from fine grained complexity like mean weighted click, uh, this computation is tied up to n to the little uh, o of 1 factors, both for sparse and dense graphs. Um, if we look at unweighted graphs, um, or graphs with integer weights with maximum weight m, uh, then we can compute all pairs uh, shortest paths and hence the um, girth uh, in order m and to the omega time using fast matrix multiplication, um, where omega is the exponent of matrix multiplication and is less than 2.373. This improves upon MN only for somewhat dense graphs with uh, small weights, um, and uh, it is not considered very practical due to the large overhead of fast matrix multiplication techniques. Um, on the lower bound side uh, of this result, uh, using subcubic equivalences of Williams et al., it is known that even in unweighted dense graphs, any algorithm that computes the girth in order n to the 3 minus epsilon time needs to use fast matrix multiplication techniques unless one can obtain a subcubic time uh, combinatorial boolean matrix multiplication algorithm. So basically these results show that there is not much hope for improving the exact computation bounds for the girth um, unless uh, there is a breakthrough for another famous problem and so we resort to approximation. On the approximation side, there has been a lot of work, especially for undirected graphs. Um, the strongest result is due to Roditi and Williams. They uh, gave a two approximation algorithm which runs in uh, order n to the 5 thirds. The reason that there has been a lot of work on the undirected case is the nice structural qualities that the undirected graphs have. Um, for example, Bondi and Simonovitz showed that for any integer k, if a graph has at least around um, k n to the 1 plus 1 over k edges, then it must contain a 2k cycle. Um, we don't have these nice structural results for the directed case, and hence there are not as many results for approximating girth in directed graphs as the undirected case. The first approximate result uh, comes from approximating, uh, approximation results on APSP, all per shortest paths. Uh, Zwick gave a 1 plus epsilon approximation for all per uh, shortest paths, uh, which runs in n to the uh, omega log m, um, uh, where the b uh, big m is um, the maximum weight of the edges. And uh, this approximation factor and running time holds for the girth as well. Um, the first non-trivial approximation for the girth in directed graphs is due to Pachoki et al. in 2018, um, which is a polylog approximation in log n time, in, uh, in linear time. Um, then Chechik et al. gave the first constant factor approximation in their stock 2020 paper, and they showed that there is a randomized order a k log k approximation algorithm running in m uh, to the 1 plus 1 over k time. 
Um, and this result, the best approximation factor for running time uh, better than mn is 3, and their algorithm runs in m root n time. Um, so what we do is that we first improve this approximation factor. We show a two approximation algorithm in order mn to the three, three quarters time for unweighted graphs. And uh, we show a matching lower bound. Uh, we show that under case cycle hypothesis, any better than two approximation uh, of the girth needs uh, essentially m squared time. Um, the case cycle hypothesis says that basically for any epsilon, there is this value of k such that if you want to detect a case cycle in a directed graph, you need m to the 2 minus epsilon time. Um, now for the weighted graphs. Uh, we prove a 2 plus uh, epsilon approximation in m root n time. We bring this one step further and uh, give a 4 plus epsilon approximation in mn to the uh, root 2 uh, minus 1 time. Um, note that the best running time for this approximation factor was m root n due to Chechik et al. And finally, uh, we give a generalized result on an algorithm uh, with uh, 2k plus epsilon approximation factor running in mn to the alpha k time, where alpha k is the unique positive answer to this equation that you see here. If you plug 2 and 4 in this equation, you get the exact bounds above. Um, the last result uh, shaves off constants from the results of Chechik et al. because as k grows, alpha k grows as theta of log k over k. So the main improvements in these results lie in the improved running time for small constant approximation factors. Um, now before going into more details about uh, these results, uh, let's have a quick detour uh, to round trip spanners. Um, and then we go back to our algorithmic results. Spanners in undirected graphs approximate pairwise distances between nodes. Um, the equivalent uh, of it in directed graphs is round-trip spanner. Let's define it again. Uh, so a C approximate round-trip spanner of a directed graph G is a subgraph H of G such that for, uh, for any two vertices U and V, the round-trip distance of U and V in H is at most C times the round-trip distance of U and V in G. Um, in 2019, it was proved that every endnote graph contains a 2k minus 1 plus little o of 1 approximate round trip spanner uh, on order kn to the power of 1 plus 1 over k log n edges. There's a similar result for undirected version as well. Uh, and the little o of 1 error can be removed if the edge weights uh, are at most polynomial in n, and uh, the result is then optimal up to log factors uh, under the erdos girth conjecture. So you might think that, the, well, um, what is left to prove? Uh, so this is an existence result. Uh, we are in fact interested in finding such spanners in short time, which hasn't been studied a lot. Um, so Cheshik et al. showed that one can find a k log k approximate uh, round trip spanner in m to the 1 plus 1 over k time. Uh, the best constant factor that this result gives is an 8 plus epsilon approximate spanner with n to the 1.5 edges in m root n time. Um, we improve the approximation factor and give a 5 plus epsilon approximate round trip spanner in the uh, same time and number of edges roughly. Um, the spanner algorithms in both Chechik et al. and uh, our results are uh, a generalization of the uh, Girth algorithms. So um, I'll move to the Girth approximation results to explain the ideas there in more details. So um, uh, the ideas um, are as follows. Uh, these ideas are not original to our paper. Uh, they have been used in the past directed girth results as well. Uh, we tune them and use them together to get our results. So first, uh, note that we can assume the degree of all vertices is uh, order m over n. This is because we can change any directed graph by adding edges and nodes so that the sparsity of the graph doesn't change the size of the graph doesn't change much, uh, the girth stays exactly the same, and the degree of any node becomes order m over n. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go into more details about this step. Uh, this step was shown for weighted graphs before. We showed it for unweighted graphs as well. 
The second idea is called modified BFS, which is a kind of BFS where we don't keep all the vertices that we visit. The goal is to move deep into the BFS in short time and such that we keep the vertices that are important to us. A slightly different version of uh, modified BFS was used uh, in Chachi Gadol's paper as well and um, uh, with the same goal. Um, so let's uh, go into more details about this step. Um, to put these ideas into perspective, I'm going to go through our two approximate algorithm. Uh, to remind you of our results, we give a two approximation algorithm for the girth in directed unweighted graphs in mn to the theory quarters time. Um, the general idea, which is used in a lot of graph algorithms, is the following. So um, we first sample a bunch of vertices and do BFS from them. Then if the girth is too big, we catch a vertex in the smallest cycle by the sampling procedure with hyperability. And so we basically can find the cycle through this vertex. Otherwise, if the girth is small, uh, we search locally. Um, we're going to focus on this part, uh, which uses the modified BFS. So suppose that um, the girth G is at most uh, G prime, which is less than n to the delta for some parameter delta less than 1. Our goal is the following. For every vertex U, we want to find the smallest cycle passing through U that has length at most G prime. I've put the goal up there so we don't forget it. Um, we are first going to do normal BFS from all vertices as follows. Let's call uh, the jth level of the BFS from U B sub J of U. Uh, so it consists of the vertices with distance J from U. Let's assume that all these B sub J sets, which are the different levels of BFS, are small, uh, meaning that they have at most n to the t vertices for some parameter t less than 1. This is not necessarily true, but it makes our life much easier for now. So with this assumption, we take a vertex u, we do BFS from it until level j, uh, g prime. So we meet uh, g prime uh, and to the t vertices in each BFS, and since they have order m over n degree, um, this takes a total time of m n to the t times g prime, which is at most m n to the t plus delta. Now if we choose delta and t such that t plus delta is less than 1, we're good. But this assumption that we made is not necessarily true. Some of these sets, or maybe a lot of them, might be big, like order n. Um, now, the idea is to do BFS from all vertices, but in a way that we only keep order n to the t vertices in each level of the BFS, um, such that all the vertices in a small cycle with u are kept. To implement this idea, we need to see that if a vertex is in a small cycle with u, what properties it has. So if you're doing BFS uh, from u, suppose that there is a node v in level j of the BFS that is in a cycle of length at most g prime with u, and let w be any other node in v sub j. Then uh, we have that the distance from v to w is at most g prime. This is because using triangle inequality, we can go from v to u, then from u to w. Uh, this symbol property is what we are going to use. Uh, so um, now uh, we're going to make an assumption and see how this property that, that I just explained works for us. Um, suppose that for each node uh, u and each number j, we have a set r sub j of u in b sub j of u, such that the size of this set is polylog n, so it is a small, and um, the number of vertices in b sub j of u that are at distance at most g prime from all the vertices in r j u is at most n to the t. Um, if we call this set n j u, um, then the idea is that if v is in a small cycle with u, v is going to be in these red sets, in these n j u's. And since they are small sets, we can find them. Um, now we are going to show how to do our modified BFS using uh, these sets. So I've put the assumption and our goal up there, so we don't forget it. Um, suppose that we are going to do BFS from U. We go through all the neighbors of U like a normal BFS, except that uh, each node that we visit, we see if it has distance at most G prime to all vertices in R1 of U. Uh, if it does, then we keep it. Um, if, it uh, if it is farther, uh, then we throw it away. Uh, so we have this set of vertices here. 
And because of our assumption, we keep at most n to the t vertices uh, in B1 of u as we want it. Now suppose that we've kept at most n to the t nodes in B, uh, in B sub j minus 1 of u in our BFS. For the next layer, we examine all the neighbors of these vertices. Uh, we check uh, if each of these nodes has distance at most g prime to all vertices of RJU. And uh, if it does, we keep it. If it doesn't, we throw it away. So again, because of our assumption, we keep at most n to the t nodes here too. Um, at each of these steps, if there is an edge back to you, uh, we have a cycle. So we keep an eye on these back edges um, to record the small cycles that we find. Um, so to compute the time that we've spent, we keep only the purple nodes and uh, there are only n to the t of them in each level. And uh, each has degree order m over n. We have g prime levels, which is at most n to the delta. And so uh, the time uh, the BFS takes is the number of levels times the number of nodes in each level times the degree of each vertex, which is at most m over n times n to the t plus delta. And we do BFS from all nodes, so we have a total running time of m n to the t plus delta. So we are good in terms of time as long as t plus delta is less than 1. Um, to quickly see why we're catching all the vertices, all vertices in a small cycle in these purple sets, um, suppose that B is in a cycle of length at most G prime with U, and suppose that it is in level J of the BFS. Uh, suppose that all the nodes on the UV path uh, before V are in the purple sets. Uh, so we're going to say that V is also in the purple set in BJU because of this property that um, it is a distance g prime from all vertices in BJU, so it is g prime away from all vertices in RJU, which is just a sample of BJU. So this is basically why the modified uh, BFS works. Now, in order for our modified BFS to actually work, we need these RJU sets which are sampled from BJU, but we don't have BJUs because uh, we have to do normal BFS to have them and that's too expensive and that's basically what we're avoiding. Um, so we want to sample from a set without actually having this set. Um, so these RJUs have another property as well and it's that we want them to limit the number of vertices at distance G prime to all vertices in RJU. Um, we are first going to show how to sample from BJU uniformly at random without having them. Um, so we do the following. For each j from 1 to g prime, let s sub j be a random sample of vertices taken with probability log n over um, n to the t. These sets are uh, taken independently from each other. Um, this means that each s sub j has size n to the power of 1 minus t log n um, with high probability. Um, if we do BFS from all these sets, uh, then uh, we know which vertices are j away from u, and so these uh, form the intersection of sj and bju. And if bju is at least n to the t log n, this intersection has size log n with high probability. So this is going to be our sample set from bju. And this set is basically as if we sampled uniformly at random from bju. And so this is how we can sample from a set that we don't actually have uniformly at random. Uh, now for the second property, we have the following lemma. Uh, if we somehow sample log n vertices from BJ uniformly at random, uh, and well, we know how to do it now, uh, then the number of vertices in BJU that are at most g prime away from all these samples is at most uh, 0.8 times the size of BJU. So a constant fraction of it. Um, this is basically because if we have too many pairs V and V prime such that V is G prime close to V prime, then we have a lot of cycles of length to G prime. And uh, we catch them by sampling argument that we have at the beginning of our algorithm. Now we can uh, kind of iterate uh, from here to further shrink uh, the size of uh, these sets. Um, okay, now uh, let's see how we can generalize these techniques into a 2k plus epsilon algorithm. 
Um, to remind you, for the general case, we proved that there is a 2k plus epsilon approximation algorithm for the Gerth in directed graphs uh, that runs in mn to the alpha k time, where alpha k is the unique positive answer to this equation. Um, suppose that through some initial sampling process, we have an estimate of the girth as g prime, and we are going to do a local search to see if one can find any cycle with length at most g prime. Uh, and suppose that uh, we are aiming for an order mn to the alpha running time for some parameter alpha. Uh, this means that we want to spend m over n times n to the power of alpha per vertex. Um, we do modify the out BFS from u, and we stop when we reach a vertex that is uh, more than a g prime over 2 away from u. Uh, note that our modified BFS uh, promises us that the set of vertices that we keep in each level is at most n to the 1 minus alpha. If the set of vertices that we keep in these BFS is at most 2 n to the power of alpha, uh, then we can detect the smallest cycle passing through u by doing a BFS in the subgraph induced by these vertices. Um, since in our modified BFS, we keep all the vertices uh, that are in the smallest cycle. Um, but this does not necessarily happen. So suppose that in either the in BFS or out BFS, the set of vertices that we keep is bigger than n to the alpha. Let's suppose that the out BFS set is big. Uh, so our goal is changed now. We wanted to catch any small cycle passing through u. Uh, now that we have spent more time than we wanted to on u, we need to change our goal. Um, we're going to do another modified out BFS from u um, with the goal that uh, we want to catch any small cycle passing through any of the vertices visited in the first BFS uh, in the small red set. This is basically a one step of the recursion. If we see that the second modified BFS gives us too many vertices again, then we change our goal again. Um, if the number of modified BFSs that we do from a node is k, uh, we get a 2k plus epsilon approximation. Um, so this was a high-level idea of the general case. I want to close with uh, one open problem. Um, Chechek et al. on our paper showed a k-log k approximation algorithm for computing girth in directed graphs in mn to the 1 uh, over k time. Um, well, this a log k factor here um, seems unnecessary. Um, you can see the sort of oddness of this factor when you consider linear time. For linear time, this result gives us log n times log log n as an approximation factor, which does not seem optimal for an approximation factor. Uh, so the next improvement can be getting rid of this uh, log k factor, or rather unexpectedly uh, showing that it is indeed uh, needed. Thank you for listening to my talk.